Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high-quality health care to residents of Western New York, offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Meter's Restaurant, a family tradition for over 50 years in downtown Ripley, is a proud supporter of Chautauqua Sunrise. Meter's provides all-day dining, banquet services, and custom catering, specializing in pie. Funding for Chautauqua Sunrise is provided in part by the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency, with offices in Jamestown and Dunkirk, helping businesses to prosper throughout Chautauqua County. From supporting people with disabilities to enjoy great lives to providing health care services that are available to anyone, the Resource Center has been improving our county for more than 60 years. Learn more about how the Resource Center makes a positive difference in people's lives. Is getting vaccinated on your to-do list? We can help you check it off because we make getting vaccinated easy. You've got this because we've got you. To learn more, visit yougotthis.usaging.org. From the Access Chautauqua Studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Chautauqua. We are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Chautauqua Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week from 9 to 10 a.m. Send events via email or call us live. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. And now, from the Access Chautauqua Studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Good morning, everybody. I'm Doc Hamels, and welcome to Chautauqua Sunrise. Well, did you all enjoy the uh, Four Seasons this week? <laughs> Holy cow! Well, it's, uh, it's that time of year here where you just never know what you're going to get when you wake up. But it's always that time of year. You're right. Justin, did you get any snow in Jamestown? No. No. Uh, I don't know where the snow went. And I know it's still, we were under a warning till 2 o'clock, but it's just wet out there. Thank you. No, no, no complaints on that. But anyways, uh, wow, the wind was ferocious last night. I thought we would see more trees down. But I think after all the windstorms we've had, I don't think there's much left in knockdown. I know the telephone poles are coming down and the, those poor guys are out there in the crazy weather putting them back up. But anyways, I digress. So good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Good afternoon to all my friends on WRFA 107.9, low power to people in Jamestown, Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. We've got a fun show in to, uh, to talk about today. We're going to talk about soups and we're going to be talking about pie and comfort food and uh, well, you'll learn more about that here in a little bit. All right, I want to do a shout out to my friends over in the Ukraine, Natalia and crew. Good morning. I hope you're watching because, well, you're going to hear all about good American food. Uh, and sometimes you'll have to send over some recipes of some Ukrainian food, and I'll share that with my friends. During the show, if you are interested in giving us a call or have a question, a comment, a uh, an announcement, something to do with your club or organization, a birthday, an anniversary, whatever. Give us a call. Ready, Jeff? Here we go. 716-753-5225. Throughout the week, if you want to send us something like an announcement, I always tell you, we got them right here. Chautauqua Sunrise, all one word, at gmail.com. Chautauqua Sunrise, all one word, at gmail.com, and we'll be happy to get your announcement on the air, okay? So we're here to, to share information. We're a community-based uh, TV show, and um, it's free of charge. Happy to do it. All right, well, I guess everybody survived the eclipse. Social media, oh, we're on, yeah, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. You can find us everywhere. <laughs> 
the eclipse was kind of interesting, wasn't it? Uh, I know some people got kind of bummed out because it was cloudy and they could just see little bits, but uh, uh, if you lived in Ripley, it was a good day for the eclipse. All of a sudden, just like the, the skies parted and uh, we were watching the eclipse, we were out in, in, actually we have like a pond out front of our house and there's like a little peninsula island. Me and my daughter sat there, my wife was up on the deck, she said, I'm not going out there. And <laughs> she, you never know what's going to happen during the eclipse, right? Uh, it wasn't the end of the world as they predicted, but all, all went well and the skies did break and uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. Um, as town historian in Ripley, I decided to do a little research and I'm not done by any means. But in uh, 2020, excuse me, <laughs> 1925 in January, I think it was the 24th or 23rd, something like that, there was a total eclipse of the sun that day. And uh, you'll never guess what they did instead of glasses. Any guesses, Just No, no guesses? They recommended in the newspaper back 99 years ago that you smoked glass. <laughs> I'm sure that saved a lot of retinas. Anyways, that they, and they were saying that uh, when the total eclipse took place, the cows laid down, and that all this terrific wind came through, and all this other stuff. So they were having quite a time with the uh, total eclipse 99 years ago. And they said then that the last time they had a, a total eclipse for Chautauqua County was 1806. So I, I guess I have to appreciate that this is something that only happens every so often in Fortunately, we got to see it in our lifetime. So, For the record, John, you can use your welding helmet. Uh, you could use my welding helmet. I have, oh, I have tons of them in my basement. Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody has a welding helmet. <laughs> could you see me clunking <laughs> into things? <laughs> so anyways, uh, I know that a lot of people had a lot of fun with the uh, clips and, uh, and their parties and, uh, you know, music and food and all kinds of good stuff. And um, so anyways... That's we, done. We had a good story for that one. Well, we'll talk to you in a little bit on that. Hold oh, that. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Who invited these people? All right. <laughs> All right. Let's get to some announcements because obviously one of my guests is trying to get on the show here already. So let's let's do the announcements. Let's go to Jamestown at the uh, Regilin A. They're featuring Napoleon Dynamite, a conversation with John Hedder and Efren Ramirez. This is going to be shown on uh, Wednesday, April 17th. That's coming up this week at 7 p.m. Uh, let's see, three hours including movie screening and discussion. Limited VIP experience tickets are available. I don't know what that means. The beloved indie classic, uh, Napoleon Dynamite, was released 20 years ago this summer. Since then, much has changed, but the characters, as enduring as they are, um, stay in our hearts, appealing to the inner teenager in each of us, and some of us for all times, Bob. The story, and the more importantly, the dialogue, makes Napoleon Dynamite one of the most quoted movies of our time. This unique evening includes a full screening of Napoleon Dynamite, followed by a lively, freewheeling, moderated discussion with fan favorite cast members, John uh, Heater, or Hatter, I'm not sure how to say his name, who plays Napoleon Dynamite, and Efren Ramirez, who plays Pe Pedro. Or Pedro. Uh, VIP experience is at 530, includes a signed poster and a photo opportunity. Meet and greet with Hedder and Ramirez prior to the event. Justin, this is your kind of place. <laughs> Prices include theater restoration fee. So $22 ages 12 and up, uh, $27 and $42 for adults. And if you want to go to the premium luge, it's $52. The VIP meet and greet is $72, 77 and 92 and so forth. So rather than going through all that stuff, give them a call at 484-7070. It sounds like a lot of fun and it's not very often you get to meet uh, actors and talk about the show and just have a great time. Okay, uh, then two nights, two different programs, the Banff, Center Mountain Film Festival World Tour returns to Jamestown featuring the world's best mountain sport, culture, and environmental films. This is new to me. April 19th at 7 p.m., April 20th at 7 p.m., uh, the two-day pass, they're telling me, is the best value. All tickets come with weekend pass to visit the Roger Tory Peterson Institute, which is a beautiful location. Uh, a VIP ticket for April 19th showing includes a one-hour cocktail party with wine, beer, and I love this word, charcuterie, uh, from 5.30 to 6.30. I, wrote, I learned that, that, that word last year. And exclusive seating for the film. The two-day VIP includes the opening night cocktail party and exclusive seating for both nights. 
Okay, so if you want to know more about that, again, 484-7070. All right, let's continue on. Uh, got something coming up this uh, spring. All right, and starting today, the uh, Fredonia Farmer's Market. Okay, if you haven't been to a farmer's market, they're way cool. You got local uh, products, you got local produce, you got things that are handcrafts and things of this nature. Uh, April 13th, starting today, 10 a.m. Uh, to 1. Next two uh, Saturdays, uh, 10 to 1, 10 to 1. Uh, it's at the Masonic Hall at 321 East Main Street in Fredonia. Locally grown produce, fruits, maple syrup, honey, eggs, quilts, flowers, baskets, artisans, whole lot more. If you're interested, for more information, you go to Fredonia Farmers Market, all one word, dot org, and you can learn about that. I know Mayville has one. That I'll tell you information about that when it comes up. Westfield has a wonderful farmers market, but Fredonia, I guess, is going to uh, get out in front of everybody. So again, starting this Saturday and the next couple Saturdays, uh, Fredonia Farmers Market. Now, let's go to the Audubon. It's called the Little Explorers at Audubon. That's uh, today. <clears throat> okay, and so in case you're uh, listening, stop watching me. You can watch this later on. Uh, it's going to be at the Audubon Community Nature Center, and they have all kinds of cool things there. It's Little Explorers, a children three through eight, accompanied by an adult. Nature Sounds and Songs, $12 for the adults, $9 for Nature Center members, $9 for children three to eight. Okay, so spring can get pretty noisy in nature. Join Audubon to explore the many sound songs and calls made by animals and other sources. Learn how and why animals make these uh, various sounds. You know, all kidding aside, if you go out into the woods right now, you're going to hear sounds that you don't hear in the wintertime. I always can tell certain birds that come back uh, each spring. I heard a noise the other day, looked up, and I was right, it was a bluebird. So uh, if you don't have the opportunity to make this uh, event at the Audubon. They got things all, all year round, so check them out. All right, so if you're interested, you can go to, oh uh, boy, I'm gonna try to do this best for you, Audubon CNC. So that's all one word, audubonCNC.org. Okay, or you can look up their phone number in the book and uh, give them a call to find out more information. All right, now, let's see here. We got uh, something from uh, Westfield Memorial Hospital presents a pinwheel display. Uh, I think we have a picture on that, maybe? There it is. All right, they're one of my uh, underwriters here. To Mark, and we talked about this last week, Child Abuse Awareness Week. All right, April is National Child Abuse Prevention Awareness Month, and officials from AHN Westfield Memorial Hospital, uh, its emergency department, and a gathering of social service organizations presented a pinwheels for prevention display of blue, blue pinwheels on the front lawn of the hospital to engage community in child abuse prevention. Okay, look at them all. Wow. The pinwheel is the symbol of Child Abuse Prevention Awareness Month and symbolizes the happy and safe childhood that every child deserves. Uh, along with uh, the a AHN Westfield Memorial Hospital Administrator Rodney Buchanan, who was on here not too long ago, in the pre pre presentation was uh, Melissa McMahon, Director of Certification, Department of Mental Hygiene and Social Services, and Saradin Randall, who's been here on the show, Coordinator of the Child Advocacy Program for Safe Harbor. So uh, congratulations for them to uh, take the opportunity to recognize the fact that this is an issue here in our county as well as around the world. And if you see uh, blue pinwheels, that's what that's all about. So thank you, Jeff, for popping that up. All right, this is one of those mark your calendar type things. It's not happening right now, but uh, something called Embrace Fredonia to manage attic and cellar days, 2024. Trust me when I say this, if you got an attic full of stuff or a basement, this is your opportunity if you live up that way or you can be part of it, um, that you can get rid of some stuff. It's a, Embrace Fredoni is a local nonprofit organization organizing and running Attic and Cellar Days, which will be held May 31 to June 2nd. So I'm telling you this ahead of time so you can think about it because uh, when you do one of these things, it's not like something you want to say, oh, I think I'll go over there tomorrow and bring my stuff. You got to sort it out. You got to figure out the pricing on it and all that stuff and make sure that it's something you really, really want to get rid of. I have trouble with that. I have attachment issues. The Chamber of Commerce organized Attic and Cellar Days for many years, but it was recognized that this event more closely aligns with the objective of Embrace Fredonia, established in 2023, whose projects are conducted in collaboration with volunteers, local businesses, and organizations to help enhance the visual appeal of the community and uplift community spirit. Okay, so I'm looking for something for contact information. 
I don't, okay, uh, I guess the easiest thing to do is if you want to know more, uh, go to EmbraceFredonia, all one word, dot com, and you're going to find all about what's going on with them. All right, and they have different events throughout the year. But uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up that that's coming up. And two more things. Okay, now, this is kind of interesting. The City of Jamestown Fire Department, in collaboration with the City of Dunkirk uh, Fire Department, Village of Fredonia Fire Department, and Chautauqua County Volunteer Fire Department, so I think that covers everybody, is pleased to announce the upcoming hang on, fire depart, fi <laughs> firefighter candidate physical ability test called CPAT, screening event. This event will take place on Saturday, May 4th, so it's a market calendar kind of thing, so if anybody's interested, Saturday, May 4th, and Sunday, May 5th, from 9 to 3 a.m. at the Northwest Savings Bank Arena down on 3rd Street in Jamestown. All right, this screening is a rigorous physical ability screening designed for potential new, fire, new firefighters. Developed by uh, fire service professionals, the test consists of eight separate, event, separate events stations whew, to assess candidates' physical capabilities. Fire department administrators utilize the CPAT to obtain a qualified pool of potential firefighter candidates. Hmm. This screening event is open to all individuals interested in pursuing a career in firefighting, whether through volunteer or career paid service in Chautauqua County. Uh, representatives from both volunteer and fi uh, career fire departments will be present to discuss recruitment possibilities and answer questions. There is no cost to participate in this event. Participants must be 17 years of age or older. Uh, individuals under 18 years of age must have written permission in a waiver of liability signed by a parent or guardian to participate. Uh, they encourage pre-registration and according to Battalion Chief Sean Schilling, we are excited to host this uh, screening event and provide aspiring firefighters in Chautauqua County with an opportunity to demonstrate their physical abilities and pursue their passion for firefighting. Hey, if you want to know more information, give them a call. Ready? Here we go. 483-7598. 483-7598. And <laughs> thank you so much for those that are firefighters. I know there's many, many volunteer firemen throughout the county. and. Without you guys, we'd be in a world of bad uh, conditions. So many of you have saved lives and helped a lot of us out over the years. So thank you for your service. And now we're looking for other folks to fill your shoes someday. And finally, we have uh, the Westfield Memorial Hospital uh, <clears throat> Auxiliary is going to do a shred it. You might say, what is a shred it? Okay, you bring in all your personal uh, papers and if you uh, have things that you want shredded because you don't want uh, somebody to be snooping around um, in your uh, garbage <laughs> and find out personal stuff. You can take a container for only $10. They got this big machine and just shreds it right down like spaghetti. And unless you like a super sleuth, there's no way they're ever going to put all that information together and find out your personal information. And it's a fundraiser for the Westfield Memorial Hospital Auxiliary who does really awesome work at the hospital and, and decorates and provides uh, needed uh, support for the hospital. So May 4th, uh, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., shred it, okay? Oh, and we have a latecomer. The community yard sale is gonna be at the YWCA Westfield uh, site Saturday, April 20th from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. All right, so did I say 7 p.m.? Strike that, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's uh, the handwriting. Okay, there's a community yard sale at the YWCA just down the road in Westfield. For more information, 326-2011, uh, 326-2011 for a uh, community yard sale at the Y. So, uh, question. What? Why do people sell their yards? And what do you do with them when you buy a yard? Hold that thought. We're going to take a little break. I can't wait for my guests to come on. It's going to be a long show. Uh, this is a, a commercial break, uh, public service announcement for you. Stay tuned. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. 
Okay, folks, my, my guest just can't wait to get on the show. He keeps trying to butt in here. Okay, let me frame it real quick, uh, quickly here. Um, for over 42 years, um, my family and I, and some of them are longer because they, they've lived longer in Ripley than I have, but 42 years, uh, our family has been going down to our local restaurant and just enjoyed home cooking and fun and uh well, being personally terrorized on a regular basis <laughs> by my friends uh, Bob and Sheila Bentley, uh, who are one of our under underwriters for the show. And so, first of all, I want to thank you for supporting us. And now we, uh, in turn, try to support you and uh, talk a little bit about what you all do and, uh, uh, and uh, let people know a, a good stuff that you do at your, your restaurant at Meters. So, welcome back to the show. So, third, Bob, what were you going to say about yard sales? Third time? No, I, I was done. I was you were just, done. I you want to know why people sell their yards? I don't, for I don't have an answer. Well, I can stutter. That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, you know, just, just to start off right off the bat, I was watching TV yesterday, and they were complaining on whatever station I was watching that, that fast food is going up. The price of fast food? I'm going like, hello, where have you been? I mean, it's just the, the, the nature of the beast, you know? Mm -hmm. Over the years, we were just saying you could get what a piece of pie and something for a buck or what? For less than a dollar. Yeah, for back in we had, back we had a customer, and when he was little, that's yeah, what they used yeah, to come. Yeah, yeah. of course so, he's yeah. older than the hills. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Careful! He was an old guy. No, he was Careful. an old guy. We we got a lot of old guys. They're so fun. they're fun. So um, again, you guys are one of my underwriters. You've been with me for quite a long time now, and I thank you for that. Um, Sheila, I know you've been in the food business for quite a long time. So mm -hmm. what? what how did you get involved with meters? Um, well, it was it was my family that mm -hmm. had my aunt had it, and um, I had worked at Peak and Peak for several years and decided to move on. And so Trudy was looking for some help, and so I ended up serving yeah. and cooking, and I now I'm the owner. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys watch uh, food shows? Yeah. On TV, mm -hmm. which which some your favorite of them. one? We don't watch too many. I yeah. watch. We watch Chopped. We yep. did you watch the, the um, what they call the Tournament of Champions with Guy Fieri? Oh, I didn't see that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it is we intense. We were watching that when we were on vacation. Okay, yeah, a couple of his. I don't know. I don't know how we ended up watching those things. Mm -hmm. I think it was we were visiting someone. They were watching it, but you know, I pick up. I love to cook. So if, if you're in the business, though, it kind of frustrates you. It's like when I was in the construction business. Mm -hmm. Construction shows frustrated me. You know, mm -hmm. can't build a house in a week. I don't care how you do it. <laughs> well, when you watch food shows, it's like eh, it doesn't mm -hmm. always go quite that way. You're right. <laughs> well, well, and some of this competition, they show that, you know, yeah. where, where it, you know, all of a sudden the guy drops the food on the floor and, mm -hmm. or something burns because he forgot the, or she yeah. forgot it was on the, you yeah, know, so it's, it's, it's pretty happen. real. That's the reality part of it. Yeah, yeah. and that's the part I like because yeah. that's the way it's in my kitchen. <laughs> you know, at Thanksgiving time, I shoot everybody out of the kitchen. It's like, uh, this is my world here. Everybody leave. Can I help? No, thank you. Please don't. No, please. No, don't do that. Please stay away. You do let them do dishes when it's all over. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the yeah. deal. <laughs> Absolutely. I cook. Yep. You wash. So, and Bob, what's your role? How'd you get involved? Oh, we're, Obviously. We're, we're going to drop back to, we're going to drop back to the uh, eclipse first. I got, I got to tell you the story. All right, let's go for it. Okay. So, Town of Ripley clears out. There's Gone. Not, there's empty. not a car anywhere in there, and we're 10 minutes before the predicted time. And so we grab everybody, and we run up and get on the roof. There's nobody at the restaurant. There's nobody anywhere. We're on the roof of the restaurant. With our daughter and our grandson. And this yeah. car pulls up, and two guys jump out of it, and they jump out, and they're taking pictures of the street and, you know, the sky and stuff. We shout <laughs> down to them. They come up. They travel from New York City. That's where they ended up was in front of meters at that moment. And, you know, they, they tried Rochester, it was cloudy. They tried Buffalo, it still didn't. And they just kept driving until they hit that spot. Yeah, the sweet and spot. And they came Very up cool. on the roof. We put it up on Facebook. It's a couple of nice guys. And they probably spent, what, a half hour up there with us? Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. longer. Mm -hmm. At least, yeah. And, you know, they sent us pictures. We sent them pictures. Um, nice. nice. I, was, I put on Facebook the other day, probably the most photographed event in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, everybody has pictures. Yeah. They walk in here, show me your pictures. Yeah. yeah. It was cool. You know, um, all kidding aside, when uh, Barbara and I have traveled over the years, and we sh and we continue to travel, we'll we'll stop and we'll run into people in airports, or we'll run into people in Europe, or even, and they'll say, "Where are you from?" You know, the usual conversation. Mm -hmm. They'll say, "We're from Ripley," and then they'll sit there for a second. They look up in the air and they go, "Pie, pie." I've been. Yeah. Where <laughs> do they serve pie there? And and then they'll start describing it. And, uh, you know, I did a little bit of history for as a town historian for you folks. Mm -hmm. And you um, Andy Meter started in, what was it, September of si 1961, I think yep. it was, or mm -hmm. October 1st. 
So I mean, you, the, the place has been around for well over, what, 60 years or something yeah. like that now. Mm -hmm. So, but people know that because it's right off the throughway. It's off, of, it's on 20. It's, I mean, it's right in the artery of so much traffic and people come and go through our area all the time. Yeah, and the, uh, for, for years, long before we bought it, we've, mm -hmm. we've been there at the beginning of eight years now, but uh, pies were being taken all over the country. Absolutely. You know, yeah, we're back in, them. So who yeah. was, who was the original pie maker? Days. Uh, well, oh actually, yes. there's about five of us now. We've mm -hmm. we've gotten to where the demand is so high that we've trained other people. Uh, I was trained by Sheila's mom, and in, in retrospect, yeah. my mom, because mm -hmm. she was a good pie maker, but not at meters. But you know, there's there's a lot of things that have been passed through over the years. So uh, she, who, who made she, the pie? The original famous pie person was that? Oh, was that uh, Trudy's mom or? Or an aunt? No, we don't know. No. Um, well, it started with Dale's. It was Dale's family. Her mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. um, that was the Babcock. So you, right? yeah. yeah, you got. You know, Millie was in there in, mm -hmm. in that group after Andy. Millie and Gladen. Yeah. But I think Trudy's the one that really built it. Francis right. Scott. It, it built. Francis, Francis Scott, Scott was, was part of it. Oh, I know that. I met her sure. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She yeah. lived but on but Maple. I think. In the meantime, and we we have people that come in and say, "My mom used to make pies here," mm -hmm. and we're like, "Okay, people, yeah. we don't have that history." <laughs> you know, you're filling in blanks as you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 so interesting because it's really um, like every every small community in the world. I mean, mm -hmm. we've traveled, like yourselves recently, all over the place, and you go to the smaller towns, and you have the courthouse, you have the, the library, you have the restaurant. Yep. The <laughs> restaurant. You know, the, and we always look to see where all the cars are, and mm -hmm. we look for the place that has the least amount of advertising and marquee, and that's where we go to eat. Yep. And we go, gosh, this is like bean meters, it, but you, in, in Arizona or and wherever. You're, you're right about finding them across the country. I did trip across the country in December. Yeah. And I did it with no GPS and no fast food. Right. Those were my rules. And you're right, you find mm -hmm. them. You yeah. find them, you get off. You, you don't have to drive far, you know, three, four, five miles. And if people would take the time to do that, mm -hmm. it would it would help small business in America yeah. and mm -hmm. restaurants, which yeah. right now, you know, we need, we need the help. Yeah. Everybody does. And by the way, congratulations on the new twig on your family yeah. tree. Yeah. 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 And I, I only know Caitlin as KK, so yeah. I know she had, they just had she a little baby. Yeah. She grew up. Oh, she grew yeah. up. She, she went and got married and everything and lives yeah. in California, right? For, for a kid that was raised by kids, that was raised in that environment, <laughs> she's the most nervous mother you've ever seen. It's so <laughs> comical she's to watch. She's a great mother, yes. And the baby's name mother. is? Kate James. All right, yep. doing well. Well, congratulations. Yeah, to all yeah it was a thrill. Bentleys. When the baby has a baby, it's a little different. Oh, it, it, that's number nice. nine. It's mm -hmm. not like, you know, we we don't have a few right. other there, yeah. but uh, yeah. it, it was it was fun to have one right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you, you, you took over the business about eight years ago, and you must have had kind of a general idea of what you wanted to do. And everybody takes out, even this, this show, I mean, this show more from another show, and I put my own spin on it. So what was your spin on, on meters? What was your vision for it? Anything? Um, we were, well, we've slowly changed a number of things, mm -hmm. like just from the interior to decorating, and um, we have our own recipes now. We've tweaked all the, not all the recipes, but most of them. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are still like the chili. It's still the same recipe that's been there for 50 years or more. Really? You know? Yeah. But um, it's going in a direction that we enjoy. We enjoy it. We enjoy working together. And um, Are you talking about Bob? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just never heard that before. I've never heard it before. Me either. <laughs> two, two confessions here. It's probably the only one at right. meters that enjoys it. <laughs> but making pies, and um, I make a lot of soups. I, I truly enjoy making soups. Mm -hmm. It's like a. And we're going to talk about that. Yeah, it's almost bit. like a passion when you do stuff like yeah. that. You just, you just, it's not just following a recipe. It's doing your own thing. Yeah. You know. You know that that question makes. Sheila will have one response, and I'll probably think of. A different way of looking at it but when you talk about change here uh, we didn't want anything to change but it was inevitable that it had to change because of the economic times you know eight years ago it, it was believe it or not I can say it's, it was pretty easy mm -hmm. but then you had the events that happened oh, yeah. since then and mm -hmm. I'm not I don't even want to start that conversation yeah. mm -hmm. in the sense of what they were but everybody knows what yeah. the world yeah. events yeah. were yeah. and things that have happened and Challenges. it evolved, it evolved, and it's, mm -hmm. it's evolutionary, uh, every day is for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so we didn't change recipes to change them. 
Uh, I tell people and they think I'm crazy, but if I start on a recipe, it's three months before it hits the floor. You know, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me speak and, to that. I don't know how many. Tweaking I, them I bet you at least six times or more I've gone to the restaurant and I'll be sitting there and Bob will bring over a dish. He'll say, here, try this. Tell me what you think of it, right? That's mm -hmm. Or, or yep. he'll, he'll say to Barb, here, what do you think of this? So, mm -hmm. you know, we're, and I, I don't want to say guinea pigs, but you, you, you rely on us to give you honest answers. And I think that's how you build a good mm -hmm. business. You know, does it need more salt? Is it too sweet? Is it, would you buy this yeah. again? You know, that type of thing. Yeah, that's salt's a whole other word. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. No yeah. salt in our mm -hmm. soups. No, nope. yeah. don't do it. So, There's natural mm -hmm. salts in there when you're using different yeah. broths and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You, can over, get you can kill it really quick. Yeah, <laughs> we, we learned that lesson when I put salt in the first uh, French soup. Yep. <laughs> French, French onion, onion soup. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We were dropping potatoes in there to suck that salt up. <laughs> so, Bob, what about your vision? Um, you know, Sheila spoke a little bit to it. I, you and I have talked about things over the years, and you've tweaked it, turned it, dropped it, flipped it. Yeah. You know, everybody, uh, Trudy and Dale, uh, you know, there was Danny in, mm -hmm. involved in then, yeah. and David and uh, Lisa, everybody was it's involved. A family, a family everybody business. was involved back then, and mm -hmm. they, it tweaked a little bit from Millie. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was inevitable it was going to be tweaked. And tweaks are really good word, because if we take a recipe, we're not looking to change the whole thing, but mm -hmm. we're either trying to make it more consistent, and that's why you have. We're going to talk about that. We have recipe wait. cards now. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and we use them, and the prep cooks, they're required to follow the recipe. A unique thing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But uh, tweaking is a good word. When we, when we hit the pies, you know, you might put a teaspoon of cinnamon in something that didn't have it. And you don't send it out. You try it. You, you sample it. And, uh, 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 scrambled egg mix is the same way. Uh, you know, we, we were, you know, we, we actually have a blender and we blend it now. And it's got sugar, salt, uh, peppers in it. Uh, different types of peppers. It's yeah. very light, though. Yeah. Very light. Just yeah. quarter teaspoon of this, take the bitterness mm -hmm. out. Uh, it's got heavy cream in it. We mm -hmm. use a lot of heavy cream in a lot of our recipes. Wow. Uh, yeah. it, gives, it gives everything a sweetness. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <coughs> Barb's mother was, uh, my wife's mother, my mother-in-law was, was quite a cook. And we would sit around talking because, like I said, I love to cook. And uh, we'd she'd say, I'd say, well, well Tell me about what, what the recipe is. And she's well, we never wrote it down. We just got a bowl. <laughs> yeah. And we would taste it and put a pinch. I go, well, yep. what's a pinch? And she goes, well, you know, a pinch. <laughs> you know? And, and she would never, on her crust, she would never touch the crust with her hands. No touch. She would always use two, two knives. How you could make oh a pie gosh. crust with two knives, yeah. I don't know. But she did. She would, but she learned it from her mother. Right. Who learned it from their mother. You know, it was a European thing. So it was always kind of fun because we would try to say, well, tell us how to make this whatever. And she goes, well, you know, put a little dash. And <laughs> <laughs> we, we've replaced uh, knives with gloves. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was, I have heard that from but, people yeah. that come back to the pie room just to peek. Yeah. Yeah, the, we've heard it a couple times. It, yeah. It's oils from the hand. Yep. I think yep. it, that's what yep. they're all about. Yep. So uh, let's, let's start with pies, Bob. Uh, what have you learned and what are some... I, I said, let's let's talk about some tips or ideas about some of your products and yeah, things you can share. I'm not trade secrets. You, you know the rule. I know, no if, trade if secrets. I tell you, I might have to kill you. I realize yeah. that. Yeah. I have a lot more shows to go. So <laughs> 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 i got to get to 1,000, according mm. to George Borrell. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm on the other side. I'm halfway there. Well, the first thing is there are secrets. Okay. They're, really, they're really secrets that we've inherited and that we've created. It's it's a true thing if you if you want something unique. And... I personally haven't been afraid. I tell you what, I've taken the recipe in for a person that's there, and they're just uh, the uh, house dressing. Mm -hmm. We had a guy out of Ohio, and he's like, I will give anything for that house dressing. I took and made a copy of it and gave it to him. You know, there's a, there's a girl in Erie running around with that house. Uh, they, you know, it's something unique that someone just said, hey, that's something I really well, like. Are you talking about salad dressing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 just yeah. the dressing. Uh, that is a unique that has never changed. That's a. Well, what's the history? I don't, I don't even know. If Trudy got it. I, I don't, don't know, know the history. No, it's I think that came all the way from Andy. Came all, all the way through. I think it did. Back yeah. in I mean, the 60s. it's an oil yeah. sesame seed based. But Andy was a farmer. What? How did he get in the the, the restaurant business? Well, the family folklore. Yeah. Is he went down to buy a washing machine at at an auction at Meters, came home one in the restaurant. <laughs> um, but Meters wasn't a restaurant folklore. at the time, was it? 
Uh, what was it? I don't, I don't, well, you do remember back when, well, maybe you don't remember back when the I golf think station it was. and Sonoco station yeah. was half of it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or the large group, the but large room. It might have been a small store or something. It might something. Well, we got a, some pictures. There's a little yeah. s picture there of J&J's mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. dairy Snacks bar type yeah. thing. Okay. And that's what it started yeah. out as. Okay. You know, burgers and milkshakes. And okay, real, real yeah. simple. Yeah. Uh, simple, yeah. yeah. Okay. And actually, I remember, I can remember when the grill was out front. Okay. Where the, the cook would, you know, like an old fashioned yeah, old time. Yeah, almost like a truck. Had yeah. the flat a food truck without the truck. Right, yeah. right <laughs> <out>. <laughs> right. Right. Well, and, pr and prior to that, there was a bottling, a pop and soda bottling company there and so right. forth. So mm -hmm. it's it's kind of morphed over the years, but it's always been sort of part of the food industry. Yeah, it's yeah. always been. All right, the right so he goes to buy a washing machine, comes back, and he bought the place. Bought yep. the place. And it was called Meter's Dairy Bar, right? Meter's yep. Dairy Bar. We have a picture of Andy standing yeah, out front yeah, with yeah. Meter's, and they had all this. This a wooden sign, you know. I don't what know where that apron went, on. but yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he always said that white apron. But who yeah. but was he? The cook also, or or he was uh, just like um, the boss man? I guess we don't know that. I don't know history. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming he put cook time. I, yeah. I remember yeah. him when I grew up in the '60s and '70s. I remember him coming out and having the white apron on, mm -hmm. and I get called Andy quite often. When I walk <laughs> out with it now, so I guess I've gotten to that age. All right, so some of these recipes even come down from from that yeah. mm -hmm. original uh, house dressing. Yeah. If you go back to the house dressing, though, uh, it is very unique. It's very good. So what is it, like a ranch? What is it? No, it's a, it's like a vinegar. It's, it's vinegar. Oh, I know yeah. which one it is. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's like Sesame a sweet and sour kind of thing. Yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, that's one of my favorites. I, have, yeah. I forgot about that. That, that mm -hmm. sits and blends for 45 minutes oh, to yeah. an hour. Yeah. Uh, it just sits there and blends away when we're making it. Uh, oh, see. Yeah. All right, folks. And that's been the you history. You heard that first here. That's part of the secret. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Okay, but you know, um, so many of our, our recipes, even at my house, come down from, from Europe. Uh, they come in from, you know, generations ago where the people were just doing basic meals. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I tell my kids about some of the things my mother-in-law would make or, or my mother would make, and they come from the old country. Now, is that pretty much true here? You think some of these would have come in generationally? And they got it. Yeah, I'm not so sure about those. I don't think there's a lot of uh, ethnic type foods, German foods mm -hmm. or uh, Polish yeah, recipes yeah, yeah. and yeah. Italian recipes. Uh, most of it's American. American food. American. Yeah, well, American. it came from yeah. somewhere, but it was sort uh, of Americanized. You know, when we, yeah. we came in with the, the spaghetti, the spaghetti, we used to have a great recipe. The kids love it. Mm -hmm. uh, we were once told, just give us jars, canned jars of spaghetti for Christmas, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, that is that is an original mm -hmm. Sheila and Bob recipe. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a few of those in there now. Okay. Uh, and we sell a lot of spaghetti, a lot of meatballs and spaghetti. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more American fare okay. uh, yeah. all the way through now. All right. Uh, I, every once in a while I try to put something like polo sausage in there and uh, we have you know a real nice Italian sausage sandwich that comes out of Sanders, which is a, now we're back to American fare because that's a local mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. supplier. Source. And we, we try to do that. But, yeah. uh, cool. All right, so getting back to the pie. So there's some 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 techniques and well secret recipes. So what kind of pies do you make? I mean, if if, if you the way it's kind of split up now yeah. is Norma handed it over to me. That's Sheila's mom. Okay. When mm -hmm. she had some uh, medical Arthur, issues and yeah. wasn't going to be able to do it. Yeah. And never came back. I think I was conned on that one. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure the little old lady got me on that <laughs> one. But. Mm -hmm. uh, and I took it over, and for a while there, I was I make all the crust. I make crust for Sheila mm -hmm. and Herman when they're making the uh, cream pies. You make your she, own crust. Wait, 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 wait! You make your own crust. You don't. Oh, yeah. You yeah. don't buy the frozen shells or nothing. Like oh, that. stop no. it! Uh -uh. I'm asking you. Know, <laughs> <laughs> there are people out there watching right now. They want to know. Uh, but let's get this split up. Uh, right. Sheila and Herman pretty much do all of the cream pies. All right. And Herman's a local guy. Who's used Herman? To be at Herman Dale. He used to be at uh, Bova's. Uh, Key Northeast. member of our team, yeah. actually an extremely good cook, been in the food and be beverage all his life. Oh, I know Herman. He's yeah. the one that laughs really loud yes. all the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Herman. Yes. We hear him I always know where Herman is yeah. in, the, in the building. Herman's yeah. over there. He's over he, there. He is annoying, but no, no, no. We, love, it's, it's we love him for being annoying. It's a annoying. great laugh. It's a great laugh. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, Kelly and Sam. Uh, okay. Sam's the newest member of the pie team. The pie team. Bob, mm -hmm. Kelly, and Sam make the fruit pies. Fruit pies. So we've split it up that way. Okay. Uh, Bob, Kelly, and Sam make now make all the crust. Now you got to remember, uh, 
Macon Crest, uh, Kelly stepped in. She was the first one that worked with me. Uh, she came in with a wealth of knowledge from her mom okay. uh, and her grandmother on pies, which that began the tweaking of the pie recipes. And so right there, are those are all pie recipes right there? Those are all pie recipes. You going right to show there. me them? Yeah. Let me have one. Let me just pick one. I'll just just uh, at random. I don't care. Okay. Let, just a minute. Oh, he's keeping mm -hmm. the just secrets to himself here. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the... Just a minute. i got to redact a couple things oh. on here. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to read the whole thing. So yeah. this would be apple pie. So this is, uh, I'm not going to give all the secrets away, but here, so if I, if I was at your place and I was said, Doc, go make an apple pie, I would pull this card out and I would get this many apples, I would get these ingredients. Wait a minute, this it, is heaping. What, what do you mean by heaping? Everything Bob serves is heaping. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. It doesn't say anything about temperature or anything. You got to know all these things? There's, those are the things you learn when you spend... Oh, probably three months at the pie table. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, if, if you want to know the truth, the temperature of the shortening is extremely important. Hmm. It's, yeah, it's crucial. And then the, the, I, I, I know what you're looking at, the, the odd things in there. Yeah. Uh, on but that apple pie, I believe that one of the key ingredients is the brown sugar. All right, but this is just for one pie or how many pies That's is one that? pie. Yeah. That's a lot of apples. Yep. Yeah. So where do you get your apples? Uh, fruit. Well, we use fresh ones when they're okay. in season. My mom and picks them and brings them up. We peel them all the time. But we use frozen from Maplewell. Yeah. yeah, you got to. Mm -hmm. Most of our fruit ends up coming out of uh, Michigan. Okay. Uh, but it's real fruit. It's not processed oh, yeah. something or no, other. No, no. no it's yeah. whole fruit. It's individually frozen fruit. Okay. So it's already diced and sliced? IQF, or yeah. and it's, it's already sliced and frozen. What's your IQ? IQF. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean? Individually quick frozen. Oh, all right. You got you know. Yeah. You gotta tell me these so, things. Yeah. All right. So but you would make apple pie, and there's the for, there's the formula. And well, the, see, you you, you miss the you, you have to make the crust first, John. Doesn't say anything about crust there. You That's didn't give me the, I didn't give you the crust. Oh, first. you didn't give me the secret. <laughs> all right. Well, so basically, a crust is flour and other things. I yeah. assume, yeah. and there's little tweaks to it, it. One of the interesting things about our crust is it recently changed. 2020, during the shortages of everything, yeah. we yeah. couldn't buy the traditional Wesson shortening that's always been, not lard, no, nope. everybody comes in and says, use lard. No, it's, yeah. to my knowledge, it's never been used there, at least mm -hmm. at some point it probably was, but in the when we yeah. inherited, they were using Wesson okay. uh, shortening. I believe you. We couldn't buy it. Okay. Couldn't buy it. And we went through a lot of oh. different shortening at least five or six different and brands. It was yeah. very frustrating when when this doesn't come out the way you want it. Yeah, yeah. You're at their mercy, at the, and especially during the 2020 year, mm -hmm. we were at their mm -hmm. mercy, and it was frustrating. Uh, we ended up, and I'm going to tell you one of the secrets. We end up with a palm oil shortening. Palm oil. Palm oil. That's like from a palm tree. It's no. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Palm uh, oil. Palm oil shortening. All right. Mm -hmm. It's got a buttery flavor it's sweeter and the response when you when you do something like that and that's a major change that's not tweaking that's very, that was very frustrating. that's like making a left turn yeah. Yeah. yeah that was very frustrating going through that and people knew our recipe changed mm -hmm. and we're trying to get it back mm -hmm. we're trying to get it to where we it's even better if we could and we put that palm oil out and the response came Magic. Back feet mm -hmm. came through. All right. On the all, right all right. So if I walk into meters right now and I go into the pie department, and I've been there, mm -hmm. so I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. There's you, flour everywhere, yep. on your face, on your <laughs> apron, on the floor, everywhere. Mm -hmm. How many pies a day do you make, generally? Um, I'm on an average, I guess. Ballpark. Um, uh, I would say we're close to 50 a day. Yeah. What? 50? Uh, 50 a day. I'll be happy with two. Okay, throw in the frozen <laughs> pie business. Oh, don't forget that one. All right. I, yeah. All right. I, I, I'll make a note right here. Frozen yep. pies. Yep. All right. We'll yep. come back to that. Okay. So you're making 50 pies a day? I'm, no, well, remember the, not the every crust. Day, yeah. 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 We, we might make 20 crust. 20 those crust. are for the fr those are for the uh, cream pies. So you got a great yeah. big they, bowl full of stuff making crust. One, ba one batch makes 12 to 15 pies. So we're, 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 we're talking yeah. industrial level here. We're not yeah. talking my yeah. house. Yeah. All right. All right. I so hate to frame it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I got a picture of a machine coming down and throwing. So this all, all the do you no, hand mix all this? Or oh, yeah. yeah, everything's mm -hmm. made by hand. All right. No machines. No machines. Yep. Nope. All right. So you got your stuff. 
and then you divvy it up into so so much portion for a pie. Well, yeah, those those are those are crust recipe and okay, but you won't uh, show me, but that's okay. I understand. Yeah. Well, All right, secret, top secret. So then I've you roll. Show, I've, well, shown Barb, I've shown I've shown you why. Yeah. You tell me. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so you roll it out. How do you make? She the, weighs them out first. Yeah. All right, you so you out, got yeah. a hunk of something and you, you weigh it out. Yeah. Weigh it out. Yeah. Weigh it out. Uh, we go back to your temperature thing. The temperature of the palm oil is extremely important. Yeah, we, a little trade secret there. Yep, it's yeah. it's warmed up. Okay, it's so it works just right. Just right. Too warm, uh, and the and the no. crust will be watery, yeah. not watery, but it'll be. Very it's chemistry. Flowable. Yeah. yeah, it's food chemistry. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Justin, you should know that, right? Yeah. He's an old culinary arts guy. Oh, are you? Yeah. 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 All right. So mm -hmm. that's one of the important things on crust. Okay. Uh, so, so you got this thing, and it's, you weight it. Now, what do you do? You get a rolling pin or something? Or you yeah, you roll a pin. Roll it out. Yeah. You use a regular wooden rolling pin. Or you got oh, it. Yeah, no, yeah just so this, a wooden one. So your pies are from scratch, yeah, right? Yeah. right. <laughs> we, we actually have a wooden table we work on. Yeah. Okay. Baker's table. All right. So now you got it rolled out. Then what do you do? Well, drop, drop it in the tin. So what are you? Are they like steel? That's the biggest secret of all, though. What? Mm -hmm. How you drop it in the tin? Oh, <laughs> do you Pe people come back in the pie room and they're like. Mm. I've always wanted to know how to get that crust in there without, you know, because they try to pick <laughs> oh, it up and yeah. it falls apart, it rips, yeah. it does all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the so, right consistency. Yeah. So how big is, uh, how many pieces we, of pie we do you We want an 11-inch pie. 11 it's an inch and three-eighths uh, deep tin. Just in case they want to know half, those dimensions. Two and a half pounds of fruit in every one. That's why they're oh. heaped That's up. Heat. Uh -huh. That's why there's eight cups of apples in it. I didn't mention, yeah. I never mentioned quantity. <laughs> you brought that up. I didn't. You're going to get all the secrets out of me by the end of the day. I might as well just, I'm working on I might just blurt it out, you know. <laughs> All right, so, the, wow. So, so do you spray the, you can tell me that, but yep. do you spray the pan? Because that, yep. that's a, that yeah, to me is not a secret. That's like, yeah. pan, I knew it. Pan, bake, and spray. All right. You spray it, and then we flour it. Somehow you get it up both. and in, in there. We do yeah. both. We flour right. it. Uh, oh, and flour. All right, here's another secret. <laughs> you are tricky. You are tricky. Well, I, I like to cook. Mm -hmm. I, like, I don't do desserts as a rule. I'm, in, I'm on the, uh, you know, the main entree guy. All right, so then you put your fruit in there and whatever else you put in there. Then what? Uh, well, they make top crust. It, it, yeah, you gotta drop the top crust. You on gotta it. put another crust on yeah, top. Yeah. yeah, but the that, now you get into the technical part of it that I've even been trained. Uh, Kelly has a certain style because mm -hmm. we want them all to look the same when you're crimping them. And we we crimp crimp, them by crimping hand. what? You, cr you gotta crimp the top to the bottom crust so all the you don't have a little you don't, don't have a little gizmo go do, 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 yeah do. right there. Oh, you mean those little twisty things on the edge? You got it. So why do you do that? To keep the juices in it. Oh, you gotta lock all the flavor. You, you know how your oven smokes when you cook, and then you know, my oven never crazy. smokes. And then <laughs> it's the top that smokes. <laughs> <laughs> then your wife makes you scrape it off <laughs> the bottom. Part, I don't know how much I should put the fan on. <laughs> <laughs> that part. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you got the part. Do you put a hole in top? We actually letter them. Uh, apple is an A. Oh. Blackberries B. Blueberries is a small B. Small B. There's a system. Yeah. That system. that was inherited. Yeah, that was inherited. Do you have a, a pie bird? No. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, we bought one once for a relative, because she's a pie maker down south, and I, I never realized that she could, there's a little tiny ceramic bird that has a hole in it, yep. and it would, it's like a chimney. So I was just wondering if you had yeah. the, the Bentley bird. We, we cut the <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we gotta have a room at The break. Bentley <laughs> pie bird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right, so then anyway, we, we, we cut a letter in the top of it, yeah, and so that market. as we either freeze them, and one thing that is probably unique about us, unless it's at that day and we're making them uh, for order or we ran out, we freeze all the pies at that point. Mm -hmm. They all get wrapped and they go into the freezer, and we cook from frozen at meters. It's okay. A, it's a, yeah. Why not? I know it's always been pretty much that way. Yes. Well, quality no, control. That doesn't stop us yeah. from taking a fresh pie and yeah. running it back yeah. to the oven. Oh, I've and, seen it. I've seen you do that. Sure. All right, so you got a whole bunch of recipes, and those are all pie recipes that you just held up? Mm -hmm. Those are. We have how many? Tw are, how 28 many are, different pies. What? And we're, we're working on a new one. You know what like we found what? out? Like, at like a certain point, we found out this. You can put any two fruits together, and somebody will like it. Yeah. <laughs> Apple raspberry. Yeah. We have people in from Wisconsin mm -hmm. and they're they're staying at a campground down in Westfield and they said, Hey, you got any apple raspberry pie? And I looked at them and said, Never heard of apple raspberry. <laughs> what are you talking about? Apple raspberry. Oh my gosh, that's a that's a thing in northern Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I said, Well, I didn't know that. And I says, Tell you what, come back tomorrow and you can tell me how I do. Okay. That started the apple raspberries. 
Oh, cool. We, now they're, we make them every day. Yep. They're in the freezer. Now, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in the, in the restaurant, you have a board that lists every single pie that you make, right? Yeah. Pretty much, mm -hmm. yeah. 28 different kind of pies. You make 20, You don't make 28 different ones every day, right? You no. make like a batch no. of this. We vary. Batch. Yeah, yeah. we try to guess what like people want. We try to run What's your most popular? Uh, whatever's in season is the answer. Okay. It, with the exception that if you want to look at the overall apple pie is... Number one. All American. Apple and coconut. Mom yeah. and apple pie. Yeah. All right, let's leave pie. The new from. one we got. All right, you're going to tell me. Key lime. Key lime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got a key lime recipe sent to us from a friend in mm -hmm. Florida. I bet. Uh, we, weren't, we were down in Key West. We mm -hmm. opened up the cookbooks. Mm -hmm. We begged recipes, brought it all home. And this is really how a lot of things are created at Meters. Good. Our, uh, Good ideas. Yeah. yeah. From Our lobster bisque yeah. soup. Put all these put all these recipes in front of us, and mm -hmm. hmm, and then the next time we put them all in front of us and say, "Well, that can be better," and that's, okay. that's yeah. how it gets all created. Right, let's leave pie for now. Let's go to my other guest who has been anxiously <laughs> waiting to talk. Uh, wow, Sheila, you, you shut me down. You're, you're, you're the, the you know that doesn't work. You're the soup chef. So where'd you get your passion for soup? I mean, I love soup. So uh, I do too. Um, it it honestly started at Meers. Really? Like, yeah, I did some some cooking and I helped with the kitchen at, when I was at Peak and Peak. But um, I started making the soups. Trudy Trudy made them, and then of course I took over. But it's it is a true passion to make soup. You can you gotta have your heart in it to make it really good. Mm -hmm. You know, you can follow a recipe any day. But it's we get we get ideas from everywhere. And you same way with pies. You can mix two things together, and it's like wow, that's really good. I think yeah. the other day I had your chicken tortilla soup. Yep, that's a, a new little, one. Had a little yep. kick to it. It does, yeah, it does. <laughs> so you have mm -hmm. cards there as well. Is it, 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 how many different kinds of soups do you, you put together? Oh gosh, there's there's probably 25 or more different soups we make. We vary them. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we don't like to run them. Like beef barley is one of the favorites, chicken noodle. Mm -hmm. um, but then we do a Swiss onion, um, chunky tomato. We make homemade tomato soup in the summer and then we freeze it for the winter. Mm -hmm which is, that's probably the best tomato soup I've, we've ever had, huh? So oh, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you both mentioned it already, mm -hmm. but do you, you buy as much local produce as you can yes. come yep. by? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like farm to table almost kind of a thing. Yep. All right, so. Even squash soup is really yeah. good. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. So in general, where do you start with a, a soup? So you got a big old pot. Um, yep, and you basically start with, almost every soup has like, you simmer like the vegetables first, onion, celery, Carrots, okay. whichever so you you're gonna build put, your yeah. stock. Yep. yep. You make, those, make your those, own stock. Those, yeah. Those food shows mm. stock. Mm -hmm. So okay, so you get your vegetables and you get your vegetable stock. So, yep. the, so then what? And then you simmer that, and then depending on what recipe, if it's a cream soup or mm -hmm. if it's just a broth soup, you know the broth soups of course are much easier. You know. So then, a broth would be like thin. Yeah, okay. be like like a chicken noodle or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. opposed to like a creamy potato or a Swiss onion mm -hmm. or you know. Um, there's a, oh, we make Reuben soup, too. Reuben soup? What, yeah, what, that's really what would good. Be in there? And just the same thing, corned beef, oh. um, sauerkraut. So after St. Patrick's Swiss Day. Cheese, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm. Okay, so, so so then you add, like, various ingredients? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Until everything is done, and then you finish it off. Um, of course, the, all the cream ones you have to thicken. Uh -huh. You know, well, after you put the cheese in the milk and, or heavy cream or whichever you're putting in there. And then you just thicken that, and... Then they transfer them to the pan and they go out front. So, like, how much yeah. soup do you know how to make? How's that work? Um, we well, we usually start out with um, a good two gallons, three more like three gallons probably, three gallons of each kind of soup a day. And so you then, have six gallons of soup every day. Mm -hmm. And then throw yeah. the chili. Chili's considered. Soup. Chili's every day. Yeah, chili's yeah. every day. So that chili's every day. Is, yeah. is chili a soup? Yeah, <laughs> it, it hits the soup world. Yeah, yeah. it does. Okay. But we do a, we're doing a special, running a soup and sandwich special right now. Yeah, I saw and that. And that is very popular. So we do go through a lot, a large amount of soup now. You know, this time of yeah. year is like comfort food. I mean, mm -hmm. I was kidding about well, maybe not the Four Seasons this week, but I mean, right, right now I could go home and have a big old bowl of soup, and it would be perfect. Oh yeah. You yeah. know, with a mm -hmm. nice hunk of bread or whatever, mm -hmm. and that'd be great. So, um, what's your favorite soup to make? Um, probably, probably the beef barley is my favorite. Really? I don't know why. It's you know but some people don't like barley, and when I was a little kid, 
I think I've mentioned over the years, I'm, I'm part Sicilian, and barley was a very popular mm -hmm. grain in soups, and I just love the crunch, yep. the berry crunch. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know what there is about it. It's got great flavor. And I've had your, your, your beef barley yep. over we the years. Yeah, we make chicken barley sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, don't I get asked? What's your favorite soup? Come on, I'm saying, oh, <laughs> thank you. Why don't you two change seats for a second? Bob, what's your favorite soup? <laughs> Grandma B's vegetable beef soup. I yeah, love that's making right. it. It's yeah. my mom's recipe, and we we don't make three three gallons of that. We make a five gallon bucket, and it goes. But what I want to throw at the whole thing is, and we talked about this on the way over, that soup's really good, but on day two it's better. Oh, absolutely. And on day yes. three, yes. it's <coughs> even better. I, soup soup has longevity, mm -hmm. uh, and we don't ever we don't ever do a soup three days in a row. No, mm -hmm. but if you, you get more compliments on day two, Absolutely. and then when you've got the end of it on day three, it just gets better and yeah. better as I it agree. sits. I agree 100%. Yeah. As it simmers, as it sits, yeah. So well, chicken wing soup is another popular one. Oh, uh, yeah, well, you got really it. we got a yeah. new one, too. Chicken dumpling soup. Oh, that's yeah, that's crazy good. good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you make your own noodles? Um, no, I don't. I don't. Herman does make noodles sometimes. Okay. I, I don't make my own well, noodles, I'll but tell you, we do make our own dumplings. I'll yeah. tell you why, because... Um, my wife Barb makes what she calls pot, pot pie, mm -hmm. which is not a pie. It's yeah. a big kettle of soup. Right. You put potatoes and yep. stuff mm -hmm. like that. And Vegetables. She, and yeah, right. And then you make your own. It's like, it kind of reminds me of a pie crust. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Some Barb and but she, <laughs> but she makes these little squares, and then she drops it into the boiling soup mm -hmm. and with the potato uh, and ham. Yep. Oh. Right now, there's something in my oh, <laughs> there's something in my house right now, and I'm going to have it for lunch. But like you said, after a couple of days, it's like it's oh great, yeah. my gosh, the flavors blend. So I got a question yeah. that came in, and the question is, do you make your own fresh bread, or ever? Let's put it that way. Yeah, we have, well, we have homemade bread. Yep. Yeah, okay. we have homemade bread. And yeah. What kind of homemade bread? It's like, either wheat or like a whole grain. Sourdough, wheat. or I think. Uh, just nope, just oh, wheat or white or Italian. We do okay. Italian too. Yeah. yeah. So there, there's a. There's a plan down the road for that bakery mm -hmm. idea where we would make mm -hmm. the different breads and different things, but mm -hmm. homemade wheat, homemade white, and we do an Italian, yeah, mm -hmm. Italian white also. Okay. We got a couple of minutes left. We we talked about pies. We've talked. We've touched on soups. Anything you, else you want to say about the soups? I mean, so soups uh, either come a cup or a bowl, right? Right. And yep. uh, mm -hmm. and what's what's the feature today for soup? Uh, today is uh, loaded baked potato, mm. and then I don't know. I had to leave, so I'm not sure. What, <laughs> I'm not sure what Herman made for the so, other one. So, but, so yeah. if Herman was making the soup, he would grab that card and he yep. would. Yeah, he's, he's yep. running in a circle. Stay, he's turning around looking. <laughs> we didn't tell him we were bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> so we got like a, a, a minute, two minutes left here. Uh, Bob, anything you want to talk about as far as uh, anything else you guys make that's really cool or some plans? I know you make pizza, right? Well, yeah, we do, we do pizza for our banquet events. Mm -hmm. uh, we do pizza by request. Uh, we do soup by request too, Good. and I didn't know we that. have yep. customers coming from Erie that that buy the two three quarts of quarted a different mm -hmm. one, and then they take them home and we see them back. But uh, yeah, and we'll if I if I got to give everybody a plug here, I got to give a plug for all the restaurants in the area that are family owned, that are uh, mm -hmm. you know your town restaurants. Yep. Guys, support them. Uh, we need help. We mm -hmm. need the local people helping us, mm -hmm. supporting us. Everybody, I and mean, it's that it's it's tough out there right now. Yeah, it's yeah. really tough. Well, like uh, we both said, you go to communities across the United States, even in Europe, wherever your hometown uh, restaurants is where it's at. It's mm -hmm. homemade. I mean, well, you, yep. you know, we'll, we'll throw them out there. You got Millie's. Mm -hmm. You you got the Main Dyer. You got Quigliano's. You got Davidson's. Yeah, there's um, a lot of them. Oh, yeah, she Grill. sings in, yeah. in Mayville here. Oh, now. yeah, yeah. We've, Use a free mouth. Yeah. We, yeah. we try to hit them once mm -hmm. a year. and We'd like to do more and mm -hmm. go to our mm -hmm. competitors and show support. But yeah. uh, we actually have a kind of a committee format now uh, running meters. And mm -hmm. we, we once a month we meet at a restaurant and enjoy their food, Pretty enjoy good. what they're yeah. doing. Well, we're stealing ideas, too. Don't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't think we're beyond stealing an idea. Right. Too. See, any last thoughts about what, what for the future as far as meters or what you're going to be doing as a, as a restaurateur? Anything? Um, no, I think I think we just work at it every day and get better. And mm -hmm. um, we're we're in the direction we want to be in. We want we're exactly where we want to be. Okay. You know, nice, good home cooking. You know, everything's made from scratch. 
You know what that music means? We run out of time. So, guys, thank you for supporting us, and we are always happy to support you. We could use two or three shows a year. (laughs) (laughs) We enjoy coming here. We enjoy it. Remember the story. Sheila was really nervous about coming over. Oh, she did fine. He he makes he makes (laughs) nervous. I hope so, folks. uh, My uh, my friends, they're my friends. I'm nervous with you. I would be. (laughs) My friends, Bob and (laughs) Sheila Bentley from Meters has been sharing some uh, behind the scenes uh, tips and the process of making good home cooking and I hope you enjoyed the show next week we got some fun music here and uh, enjoy the weekend and uh, as we go along we're going to share different events with you throughout Chautauqua County have a great weekend stay dry the best you can we'll see you next week take care now